Hi, thanks for watching Dr. Linda Kramer. Today I want to talk about how does love work? This is going to be a part one because I'll probably add more videos to this one, okay? And if you know me or you've heard me or listened to me, etc., you'd know that I like using real world examples. So then we can all relate to this, okay? A friend of mine who I've grown very attached to over the past year. She's an absolutely amazing friend. Um, she's, well, they're going to get engaged, let's say it, okay? Her and her partner, I've known him for years. And when he brought this girl to my house, I thought, wow, what an amazing person. We've turned into a, it's been a flourishing friendship. That's all I can say. So this pair came over last night and they said, Linda, we're moving. They're going. Um, it's about 14 hour drive away. If you don't stop and you sit on 100 or 20, 120 K an hour. So it's a long, long way away. Um, and what I said to her last night was when they were both sitting in front of me explaining that they're moving. I said to them, I cannot stop you from going. Just that one line has so much representation and definition to it in those layers and layers of onions that goes with how we feel about other people. It's when we allow others to do what they want with their life and we accept them for who they are and their choices that they do. That is what love is all about. So I rang my friend this morning and I said to her, how do you feel? She said, Linda, <clears throat> I'm so upset. You weren't upset at all last night. And I said to her, darling, why are you expecting me to be upset? And she said, well, it'd be a representation that you care about me, that you're going to miss me. Of course, I'm going to miss her. But at the end of the day, guys, I think holistically. We put our egos into so much stuff. We, we can try and control. We try and just fathom this three-dimensional world that we exist in. But we don't think universally. So my friend isn't leaving our friendship. She's only leaving her geography. She's still going to contact me by phone. We're still going to do Skype and other things that we do. But the only thing that I will probably miss is having her physically with me. So this is where, what is love? Love is allowing other people to do what they want to do. And we gratify and we appreciate and we applaud their decisions. We accept them unconditionally. Because as I said to her this morning, it is only my ego, my wants, my missing use, my fear, if there is a fear there, of what will happen when I don't have that contact with her anymore. So that's something that I personally have to now deal with, yes? I have to sit here and judge why am I being upset over what somebody else does. You know, I say it to my daughter all the time because I'm teaching her this stuff and it's pure psychology. Never allow others to affect how you feel. Don't do it. Ru um, Helena, Eleanor Roosevelt, you know, she became first lady of the US. The media hated her because she was out talking to homeless people. You couldn't do that when you're this revered first lady of the USA. So they were hammering her in the media. So she actually wrote to the reporters and she said this famous quote, what other people think of me is none of my business. So guys, when you do look at other people in your lives, family, friends, co-workers, schoolmates, people, neighbours around your area. If you choose to do something where you lose that contact, please think 
about how they react to you doing what you want to do, okay? Because no one else matters. Number one is all that matters. Because we've got to take our ego out of the equation and say to ourselves, is this a right decision that they should be doing? Do we think we can put any other input or information, data, research into the choices that they are doing? You know, so when my friend said to me this morning, I'm so upset that you weren't upset, I actually turned that back onto her and I said, why are you affected by how I feel? That's ego. You know, we've got to think our souls are eternal. We've, we've been here many, 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 many times before and we'll be here many, 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 many times in the future. But when we go home, heaven, whatever you want to call it, we are our soulistic reality again. We become that consciousness and awareness where this lifetime as like half an inch in the eternity of time and space. We've got to try and remember that because this lovely friend of mine, her and I will now be connected forever. No distance like geography. No technolo technology like Skype, Messenger, phone calls, phone calls on our phone. That's not going to stop the connection that her and I now have. And it's that connection, that friendship that has now blossomed into that love of friends that matters. Nothing can break it. Once we have that love of another person, a flower, even my water bottle. Now you're going to think, Linda, are you crazy? I love this water bottle. Because without it, I wouldn't have the sustenance for my survival. So I do cherish and appreciate and value every drop of water I drink. And that's how we are with our friendships, our acquaintances and our family interactions with family, friends, neighbours, co-workers and other people in society that we mingle with. Okay, so let's now talk about loss. Let's now talk about that grief of missing somebody. Because what I want you all to remember here is that that is just an emotional attachment whereby our ego is trying to control that situation. We try, that's why we miss, we yearn for something. So, as psychology dictates, the best way to get through that is to find something else to replace it. If you move and you've left all your friends behind, go out and meet other friends. Join groups. Hello, look how many online groups there are, just when saying that. There are ways of intermingling with other people. And if you do have a problem there and you say, oh, I'd never be able to do that, then that's something I want you to look at today and say, why do I feel so insecure about not accepting that opportunity for my own growth? Yes, we get scared when facing new things, new routines. It's science, our system. Um, neuroplasticity of our brain with our synaptic network it dictates that we love our routines and habits so if you do find that you're changing you're going out you're learning new things or you have to move your location please know that you've still got that energetic connection to those that you've left behind i talk to spirits and ghosts every day and guess what they're always here. It's only our ego that says that we have five senses. Sight, hearing, smell, touch. What's the other one? Are you just listening? It's only because we base our opinion on our five senses that we 
judge and feel confident to trust them. When we look deeper at our own soul, our own consciousness and our awareness and our perspective, you'll find within yourself, <coughs> excuse me, it doesn't matter where my friend lives. It doesn't matter if she lives or dies. We are still one. Because ultimately, guys, everything is one. Now you're wondering how love works. Love is so strong. It is that tie. It is that connection. It is that unity of strength that we get when we love something. And nothing can ever break it. Hope you're having a good day, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye. To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.